And now, stay tuned for the mystery program that is unique among all mystery programs. Because even when you know who's guilty, you always receive a startling surprise at the final curtain. In the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. I am the Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Signal Oil Company, the Whistler's strange story, Murder in Mind. The Hollister House looked as permanent as the hillside it occupied in the exclusive Terrace Heights district on the outskirts of town. The house itself sprawled along the crest of the hill, overlooking the rambling wooded ground. That late afternoon and early spring, Gil Hollister and his wife Vicky sat facing one another on the broad terrace. Neither spoke for a time, for they were waiting, waiting for something to happen. And then Gil sprang to his feet and started pacing the stone-floored terrace. Well, we ought to be hearing something by now. It shouldn't take this long. Oh, be quiet, will you, Gil? I'm trying to listen. I'm trying not to. Don't tell me you're sorry you did it. I'm not sorry, Vicky. I'm not anything. Just wish it were over, that's all. If you did what you were supposed to do, we won't have much longer to wait. Oh, Gil, stop pacing I've got to do something. How about a drink? Not for me. But you look like you could use one. Yes. I guess I could. You move rigidly, mechanically, over to the bar under the striped canopy on the side of the terrace. Go through the motions of making a highball with unsteady hands. And your mind is turning over and over. What could have gone wrong, Gil? Should have happened by now. Bell drove away from the house five minutes ago. And then you hear it. A car coming up the road. You freeze inside. Vicky leans forward in her chair. And then as the taxi rounds the curve and comes into view... Gil. It's Belle. She's back, Gil. How did she... Shut up. What I... I said shut up. Oh, dear me. Oh, children, I've just had the most terrifying experience. Really terrifying. Why, what's the oh. matter, Belle? Oh, let me get my breath. Oh, my goodness. I... I'm still trembling. I was fortunate enough to get a taxi to bring me back up. But uh, what happened? Well, I cannot understand it, Vicky. I certainly wasn't driving any faster than I usually do down our road. But my goodness, that last curve, you know, before the main gate, why, I went to put on my brakes to slow down a little, and, and there were no brakes. No brakes at all. You don't look at Vicky Gill. You can't. You just keep staring at Belle. Belle, your stepmother, sitting there quite alive, recounting the frightening details of her nearly fatal accident. No brakes on her car, Gil. Just when she needed them most. There were no brakes on her car. You wonder how she made it at all. She wasn't supposed to, was she, Gil? Both front fenders and the grill smashed in something terrible. Oh, my dear, what a frightful experience. Oh, do let me take you to your room and you lie down for a while. Well, I'll call Dr. Stratton, Belle. You, you've had quite a shock. Oh, my goodness, no. I'm as good as new right now, Gil. Now, don't you darlings worry about me. Oh, oh, I must call Mrs. Morgan at the center. She was expecting me. And then the garage. I must call them to pick up the car. Let me do that for you. Oh, no, dear. Thank you. It won't take a minute. And it'll take my mind off things. <laughs> After all, Gil, I want to be active while I'm still able. I might have been killed, you know. Yes, Gil, she might have been killed. You watch her bounce happily into the house, smiling and humming. She seems glad to be alive after her near uh, accident. You stand looking after her, 
and you're suddenly aware that you've dropped your guard. You're no longer tense. Just a little stunned, a little amazed. What is that stepmother of yours? Pioneer stock or something? Won't anything kill her? Nothing has so far. She won't drown. She won't trip down a flight of stairs. And she can drive a car without brakes around steep curves. Maybe she's charmed. Maybe she's supposed to go on living. On and on. Spending all your money so there'll be nothing left for you to inherit. Oh, well. She was Dad's wife. She's entitled to something. Yes, but she's taking everything. All we've got is an allowance. Well, I guess Dad never thought too much of the way I handled money. Maybe he thought it would last longer with her. <laughs> if we wait for her to die a natural death, you won't even inherit her good health. Well, good Lord, Vicky, we've tried, haven't we? I've done everything you've suggested. What else can I do? I'm not sure yet. But I'll think of something. And this time it will work. Yes, Vicky's the planner, Gil, and you're the executioner. Yes, beautiful Vicky. She amazes you, doesn't she? For the next few days, you know that Vicky is biding her time, turning a plan over in her practical mind for another accident to Bell. A plan that will work this time. One late afternoon, you're in the library with Vicky and Bell, with Bell carrying the bulk of the conversation. And as usual, she's on her favorite subject. The Community Social Work Center. Oh, dear, we're simply swamped with work. Mrs. Morgan and I are up to our ears, literally. Oh, but it is satisfying. When you help raise the downtrodden from, well, the very depths, it's very satisfying. You know, you two should really become active at the center. Social work is stimulating, genuinely stimulating. Oh, yes, I'm sure it is. Uh, Belle, dear, if you don't mind, I think I'll go to my room. Oh. We're due at the Coleman's for cocktails in an hour, oh, and I will... just do sit a moment longer, Vicky. I have I have something to tell you both. I, oh. Well, I, I don't want to alarm you, well, but... What is it, Belle? Well, I, I'm not getting any younger, you know, and lately, well, that isn't the past six months or so, well, these accidents of mine at the lake, remember, I nearly drowned? Yes, Belle, we, we remember. And then tripping on the hall stair just last month? Why, that fall would have killed me, I know. And then the breaks just a few days ago, the crash and all. What is it, Belle? What are you trying to say? Well, you'd have to know sometime, and I do hope you'll approve. Um, Foster! Foster, will you come in now, please? Foster? Who is he? Yes, Mrs. Hollister. Oh, Foster, I want you to know my children. This is Mrs. Hollister, Jr., and my stepson, Mr. Hollister. Uh, this is Foster. Mr. and Mrs. Hollister, how do you how do? You do? Uh, Foster's going to drive for me. Drive? And um, uh, what was that you said I needed, Foster? A uh, bodyguard, ma'am. Yes, that's it. A bodyguard. Coming May 1st. Coming May 1st. Yes, last Sunday, I announced, was the final Sunday that limericks would be used on the Whistler because Signal Oil Company would soon be making news with something new, something big, something exciting. That's... Coming May 1st. And that something new is a $10,000. Yes, I said $10,000 contest for Signal Gasoline with 200 thrilling, valuable prizes. First prize is a Buick Super Riviera model combining the swank of a convertible with the safety of a closed car. Second prize is an Apex Complete Automatic Laundry with three work-saving units. Apex Automatic Washer, Apex Automatic Dryer, Apex Sit-Down Ironer. And 198 other appealing prizes include Frigidaire's Deluxe Refrigerator with new electric range, plus 10 Packard Bell radios. These and dozens of other valuable prizes will be given in Signal's big $10,000 contest coming May 1st. Best of all, no purchases are required in these easy, fun-filled Signal contests. There are no box tops to send in, no tickets to save. So be sure to tune in The Whistler next Sunday for more details about this big, exciting $10,000 Signal gasoline contest coming May 1st.
Well, Gil, you hadn't planned on Foster, had you? When you and your wife, Vicky, were planning those accidents to do away with your stepmother, Belle. It never occurred to you that Belle might hire a driver and bodyguard. And you wonder if she's just appeasing some troublesome little fears, or if she really knows that you and Vicky have been plotting to kill her. Later, as you and Vicky drive down the road to the main gate on your way to the Coleman's cocktail party... Well, has the shock of Foster worn off yet? I'm getting used to the idea. Foster doesn't worry me. In fact, the more I think about it, the more I think he may turn out to be a godsend. You'll forgive me if I don't get it. <laughs> He's broke, I'll bet on it. He undoubtedly needs money desperately. Why, Gil, the more I think of it, the more I suspect that Foster might rob the wall safe. Well, Vicky, I... And Belle might even meet with foul play. Resisting the robbery, of course. Oh, no. Well, no, what... what do you think about it? I... I don't know. I... I'll need a little more time to think. Not too long, darling. I'm going to do some checking on Foster tomorrow. And if I find what I expect to find, the Hollister estate is due to be robbed within a very few days. It's an interesting thought, isn't it, Gil? And as always, you know that you can count on Vicky. The following day, the two of you drive into town for a little friendly visit with Belle's friend, Mrs. Morgan, the superintendent at the rehabilitation center. Of course, Foster's name is brought into the conversation, and you're pleased with what you hear. Oh, yes, the poor man's had such a trying time of it. Just couldn't find himself, you know. This job now with Belle is just the thing for him. I see. <laughs> Matter of fact, it was all my idea. I thought Belle could use a chauffeur, and Foster is an excellent driver. I, uh, nothing's happened, has it? I mean... Oh, no, Mrs. Morgan, we, uh, we were just wondering about Foster, his background and all. One can't be too careful, you know. Of course. We didn't want to worry Belle, asking her about it. But as Vicky says... I understand. Uh, and, and you know Belle always carries quite a bit of money around with her, keeps a considerable amount of the house, too. Yes, yes. You know, you know, it never occurred to me. Foster looks so honest. Oh, and I'm sure he is, Mrs. Morgan. Well, we'd better be running along, Gil. Yes. I still have some shopping to do. Goodbye, Mrs. Morgan. Uh, what's that, dear? Oh, yes. Bye. <laughs> The stage is set, isn't it, Gil? And you're certain Mrs. Morgan will remember your conversation with her concerning Foster. You waste little time discussing the details, carefully going over each step of the plan with Vicky. And finally, the night arrives. The night of the attempted robbery. You're on the terrace with Vicky and Belle. Foster is there, too. And you're waiting for Belle to go up to her room. Oh, oh my, it's... Such a beautiful evening, isn't it, children? Mm. Simply beautiful. You know, I think I'll take a stroll down to the creek. Anyone want to come along? Oh, I'm afraid I couldn't negotiate that path in these high heels. Oh. How about you, Gil? Do you like stretching your legs? Thanks, no. I'm nice and comfortable right where I am. Uh, you want me to come along, Mrs. Hollister? Um, no, no, thank you, Foster. You stay here and keep the children company. I shan't be long, a quarter of an hour or so. I'm only going down to the bridge. You sit back, watch Belle stroll down the path and then out of sight. And you wonder if Belle had a reason for asking Foster to remain behind. Perhaps to keep an eye on you and Vicky. You wonder, too, if she suspects something. That somehow she senses something is going to happen tonight. Finally, you get to your feet, wander inside and mix yourself a drink. A half hour goes by. Then an hour. Gil? Hmm? She's been gone quite a long time. You suppose something could have happened, Mr. Hollister? What? Uh, she mentioned the bridge. Uh, that's the one down by the gully? Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, sort of old and rickety. I think I better get down there and take a look, huh? Um, I I'll go with you, Foster. Something could have happened at that. With Foster following close behind, you hurry down the path and finally reach the old suspension bridge which spans the deep, narrow gully. 
As you start across this, Foster grabs your arm. Hold it, Mr. Hollister. Huh? Look up ahead. The handrail. It's broken, isn't it, Gil? And the rail hangs down, seeming to point to the bottom of the gully. You look down, and there in the moonlight you see her sprawled out on the rocks below. Bell. Well, she's dead, Mr. Hollister. For a moment you stand there, staring down at Bell Hollister. Yes, she's dead at last, Gil. An accidental death. And it actually happened without you or Vicky being involved at all. Before you call the police, maybe we'd better have an understanding, Mr. Hollister. What? Well, what do you mean? Mrs. Hollister was pretty sure that uh, you and your wife were trying to knock her off, make it look I... like an accident. Well, oh, that's preposterous. Is it? She told me about some of those accidents she had. I thought it'd be a good idea if she wrote all that down, put the whole story on paper, turn it over to me. What? Yeah, just in case something happened to her that I couldn't prevent. Well, now, look, Foster. Bell was killed accidentally. Maybe I saw you push her off the bridge, Mr. Hollister. Maybe you what? Yeah, maybe I saw you, and then then again, maybe I didn't. (laughs) It all depends. Depends? On how much you're willing to pay. Uh, let's go back to the house and talk this over, huh? I, uh, think your wife will want to be in on this. All right, Pop. We'll pay. Vicky. I said we'll pay. <laughs> I knew you'd see it my way, Mrs. Hollister. Now, may I see this letter Bell wrote? Yeah, sure, sure. I got it right here. It's uh, under armed escort, so don't try nothing, huh? Uh, I'll hold on to it, if you don't mind. Okay, take a look. Ah, you recognize the handwriting? Yes. We could deny this, you know. Maybe. But when I tell the police I saw Hollister push her off the bridge, plus this letter, it'll be a cinch. Well, Gil? All right. All right. Twenty grand a night, then we'll break it down to, uh... (laughs) To weekly payments, huh? Ten thousand tonight. That's all we can get our hands on. Okay, I'm not greedy. Well, now that that's settled, you can call the cops. Oh, and Mr. Hollister. Yes? Uh, when you tell your story to the law, better leave me out of it, huh? When you found her, you were alone? Why? Well, if I'm not involved, I won't have to answer questions or uh, tell lies. <laughs> I'm sensitive that way. Uh, call me when it's over. I'll be up in my room. You tell the police exactly what happened, don't you, Gil? Without mentioning Foster, of course. It's all over very quickly, and you breathe a sigh of relief when they leave, satisfied that Bell Hollis's death was purely accidental. And then later, when you're alone with Vicky, I tell you it was a mistake agreeing to Foster's demand so quickly. What else could we have done? With that letter from Bell, the police would believe anything Foster told them. How can we trust him? We can't. But don't worry. He isn't going to get away with this. Oh? We let him stay on a few days. Then one night you find him trying to get into the safe and... Ah, the law's gone, I see. Uh, yes, Foster. Yeah, that's fine, fine. Oh, Foster, that, that, uh, suitcase, what are you doing with it? <laughs> what does it look like, pal? I'm leaving. No need for me to stick around. Leaving? Yeah, I thought I'd find me a nice little apartment in town. It's kind of dull out here. I crave the bright lights, excitement... Dancing girls. <laughs> Always have. Only now I can afford it. Well, if you'll give me my dough, I'll be on my way, kid. The weeks pass, and regularly every Friday evening, when all the servants are out of the house, Foster reappears to make his collection. And you find that Bell's money, now yours, is dwindling away twice as fast now as it did when Bell was alive. Killing Foster won't solve your problem, will it? You know that you've got to get Bell's letter, too. It's important. And then finally, one night, an idea occurs to you. You tell Vicky about your plan, and she agrees. Early that Friday evening, when you're certain Foster is on his way to the estate, you pick up the phone and call the auto club in town. This is Mr. Foster, Ralph 
Foster, 327 Sherburn Drive. Yes, Mr. Foster? Uh, I was in your office a week ago asking for some travel literature. Yes, sir. And one of your clerks said she'd mail some folders out to me, but I haven't received them yet. Uh, would you find out of what course. the... one moment, sir. What is it? Going to check. It better work. It will. Don't worry about it. Vicky. The car's stopping outside. It's locked. All right. Stall him off a few minutes. Yes? I think I know what's happened, sir. You gave me your address as... Uh, 327 Sherburn Drive. We have you listed at 601 Terrace Boulevard. 601 Terrace Boulevard? Oh, I see my old address. I'm sorry, sir. No, no, my mistake. I should have notified you. Uh, well, you'll send out the pamphlet? First thing in the morning. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, we've been expecting you, Mr. Come on in, Foster. Hello, Hollis, sir. You're early. Yeah, I got to get back to town. <laughs> Date. Sit down, huh? Sit down. Well, if you don't mind, I... Uh... Please. I have something to talk over with you. Oh? Uh, Vic, how about fixing us some drinks? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Uh, proposition, Hollister? Foster, how would you like to sell me that letter of bells, huh? Get this business over with once and for all. I might be tempted. I'll give you 50000 for it. <laughs> well, uh, maybe I'd better sit down at that, huh? <laughs> Could you get me the letter tonight? Well, uh, sure. I'd have to go back to town. I'm keeping it in a nice, safe place. <laughs> Your apartment? Yeah. Too bad you don't know where it is, huh, Hollister? Oh, thank you, Mrs. Hollister. Well, Foster, are you going to sell us the letter? Yeah, why not? Well, let's drink to it, then. All right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's good bourbon. Very good. Uh, you wouldn't be stupid enough to try pulling a fast one, would you, Hollister? What? Fixing this drink, I mean. Oh, hardly. Anything happened to me and you'd never find that letter. But somebody else would. I realize that. Of course, if you knew where you could get your hands on that letter, well, it'd be a different matter, huh? <laughs> that's right. <sighs> well, let's get on to business. Iron out some details. I don't have much time. <laughs> let's... That's right, Foster. You don't have much time. It's only a matter of minutes, isn't it, Gil? And the drink begins to show its effect. Foster leans forward in his chair, peering at you, hardly able to keep his eyes open. And then he begins to clutch at his throat. <laughs> hey, what's going on? You, the drink, you did fix it. That's right, Foster. You'll be dead in another few minutes. Oh, no. No, you wouldn't. The letter, you don't know where... Oh, well, we do know where it is, Foster. Your apartment, 601 Terrace Boulevard. <laughs> how did you... Find... Remember the last time you were here, Foster? You took great delight telling me how you were spending my money, <laughs> nightclubs, a new car, a little side trip. You even joined the auto club. <laughs> I'll kill oh, you. No, you won't. <laughs> I'll take this gun. <clears throat> now, Foster, relax. It'll be over soon. You're going on a little trip. Uh, this time you're never coming back. With 200 valuable prizes to be given, there was scarcely room in my first announcement to mention even a fraction of the wonderful things you can win in Signal's thrilling $10,000 contest coming May 1st. For instance, there'll be six Packard Bell television sets with latest type black picture tube plus distinctive Packard Bell picture mask for photogenic television enjoyment. And the superb 12 and a half and 16 inch console models feature Packard Bell's unique concealed casters so you can move your television set with mere fingertip touch to most convenient viewing angle. Ah, but this is only the beginning of the wonderful prizes in Signal's big $10,000 contest. Coming May 1st, there's O'Keefe and Merritt's finest gas range with vanishing shelf and grillivator broiler. Also, five solid gold case wristwatches by Helbros with 17 jewel movements. Five makeup cases from Halliburton's famous line of featherweight aluminum luggage. Ten Westinghouse vacuum cleaners, plus 50 Westinghouse pop-up toasters. And you can be sure if it's Westinghouse. 
Yes, these and dozens of other valuable awards mean you simply can't afford to miss the new Signal Gasoline Contest coming May 1st. So be sure to listen next Sunday when I'll have more details about Signal's big, exciting $10,000 contest coming May 1st. It's almost over now, isn't it, Gil? In a few minutes, Foster will be dead. Then you'll get rid of his body, and using his key, you'll let yourself into his apartment in town, find the letter, and destroy it. You glance over at Vicky. She's smiling as she looks down on Foster. He's still alive, isn't he? But you're not going to delay another moment. With Vicky's help, you get him on his feet, half carry and drag him down the hall. And then as Vicky opens the door... Hello? What? Who are you? Lieutenant Thompson, police department. I was just about to ring when you... Well, well, who's this? Foster. Ralph Foster. What's the matter with him? Uh, he's, uh... He's sick. Let's have a look at him. Sergeant. Right, Lieutenant. Lieutenant. Poison. They poisoned me. What? Who, Foster? Who poisoned you? Fellas, his wife... His... Sergeant, you better call an ambulance. Yes, sir. No, wait a minute. Never mind. Wouldn't do any good. Well, Mr. Hollister? Oh. Lieutenant, I don't know what he's talking about. Don't you? Funny. And we're here to protect you from him. What? What do you mean? We've been checking up on Foster here ever since Mrs. Morgan down at the center told us about him. Mrs. Morgan? Seems she recommended him for a job with you folks a while back. Yes, that's right. Then Mrs. Morgan got to thinking maybe she'd made a mistake. Told us about it. We looked into the matter. Found that Foster here was wanted back east on a forgery charge. He was? Here's a sample of his work. We've already checked it. It's a letter supposedly written by Mrs. Bell Hollister, saying that you and your wife here had tried to kill her. Why, that's ridiculous. When we found it in Foster's apartment, we figured he was up to something, and we came out here to warn you. Wait a minute. That letter, you, you mean Bell didn't write it? No. This letter is an out-and-out -out forgery. Forgery? Yes. And it apparently had you fooled. But there's no fooling about your killing Foster. Let that whistle be your signal for the signal oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at this same time. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal Gasoline and Motor Oil, and fine automotive accessories. Remember, it's coming May 1st. Yes, May 1st is the opening date of Signal's big new contest with 200 valuable prizes, including a new Buick, Frigidaire refrigerator, electric range, and home freezer, Packard Bell television sets, and many others. So be sure to listen next Sunday for more details about Signal's big, exciting $10,000 contest. Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman, Larry Dobkin, Francis Robinson, Eleanor Audley, and Bill Conrad. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by Dick Anderson, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler is entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember, at this same time next Sunday, another strange tale by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>